The Mississippi River is a master of escape. Over thousands of years, it has leapt from channel to channel, reshaping the very map beneath it. Locked in place by levees and a single engineered barrier, this giant, 3,700 kilometers long, still strains to break free. Just to the west, the Atchafalaya offers gravity a faster route to the sea. If the river ever succeeds, New Orleans could lose its freshwater lifeline overnight. Why does the river keep trying to escape? And can we really hold it back? The Mississippi River stretches nearly 3,700 kilometers, carving its way from Minnesota to the Gulf of Mexico. Yet the river refuses to stay still. Over thousands of years, it has abandoned old beds, leapt into new channels, and left behind a patchwork of oxbow lakes and winding scars across the floodplain. These are not just relics of a distant past. They are reminders that the river is always searching for a better way downhill. From a physical standpoint, the river is driven by simple rules. Water seeks the fastest route to the sea, pulled by gravity and shaped by the slope of the land. In the Mississippi's lower reaches, west of Baton Rouge, a rival channel waits, the Atchafalaya River. The Atchafalaya offers a shortcut. It is both steeper and shorter than the Mississippi's current route through New Orleans. For water, that means less resistance, a quicker descent, and a natural tendency to favor the Atchafalaya over the longer, slower main channel. Geomorphologists explain that this restlessness is built into the river's DNA. Alluvial rivers like the Mississippi are constantly in flux. As sediment piles up at the delta, it gradually raises the riverbed, making the old channel less efficient. At the same time, the Atchafalaya's steeper gradient becomes increasingly attractive. The Mississippi has switched course roughly once every 1,000 years, and the evidence is written in the landscape. Each oxbow lake and abandoned meander marks a moment when the river tried and sometimes succeeded in escaping its old confines. The Atchafalaya's advantage is not just theoretical. Before major engineering projects, the Mississippi and Atchafalaya were connected by a natural corridor called Old River. Seasonal floods would send water surging from one channel to the other, depending on which route offered the path of least resistance. In the 1800s, the removal of a massive log jam, the Great Raft, opened the Atchafalaya even further, making it a more tempting escape route for the Mississippi's flow. Today, the physical rivalry between the two rivers remains unresolved. The Mississippi's main channel is slowed by its own sediment, while the Atchafalaya's steeper drop to the Gulf exerts a constant pull. Left unchecked, gravity and hydraulics would have already shifted the Mississippi westward, leaving cities like New Orleans cut off from their freshwater source. The river's urge to escape is not a matter of if, but when. It is a contest between natural forces and the human desire to hold the river in place. The Mississippi River's unpredictable power forced a reckoning in 1927. That spring, relentless rains overwhelmed levees, sending floodwaters across 27,000 square miles of the lower Mississippi Valley. Hundreds of thousands lost their homes. Farmland, towns, and entire communities vanished beneath the muddy torrent. The disaster exposed the limits of piecemeal levee building and made clear that the river could not be trusted to stay put. In the aftermath, Congress authorized the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to find a solution, not just to flooding, 
but to the river's urge to escape into the Atchafalaya. Engineers faced a challenge that stretched beyond sandbags and concrete. By the early 1950s, measurements showed that nearly one-third of the combined flow from the Mississippi and Red Rivers was already slipping toward the Atchafalaya. Left alone, the river would soon abandon its historic channel, carving a new path and leaving New Orleans and Baton Rouge dry. The Corps' answer was radical build a system that could freeze the river's decision in place. The old river control complex, completed in 1963, became the linchpin of this strategy. Its design was rooted in observation. Engineers set out to preserve the natural balance that existed around 1950, when 70% of the flow continued down the Mississippi and 30% diverted to the Atchafalaya. This 70% to 30% split was not arbitrary. It was a calculated compromise intended to keep the Mississippi as the main commercial artery while acknowledging the Atchafalaya's growing pull. The core of the complex is the low sill control structure, a dam 566 feet long equipped with 11 massive gates. Under normal conditions, operators adjust these gates daily, maintaining the delicate balance between the two rivers. During high water, the adjacent overbank structure stands ready to handle overflow, providing a backup when the Mississippi threatens to surge out of control. Together, these structures act less like a dam and more like a set of scales constantly recalibrated to keep the river's ambitions in check. For the engineers who run the system, the work is never routine. Each day brings new readings, new calculations, and new decisions. The old river control complex is not a permanent solution. It is a negotiation enforced by steel and concrete that holds the river to a deal struck more than half a century ago. The 70% to 30% split remains the line in the sand. But every season, every flood, tests whether that line can hold. April 1973 brought the kind of flood that engineers dread. At Old River, water slammed against the low sill control structure with a force never seen before. Gauges showed more than half a million cubic feet per second surging through the gates over 50% of the so-called Project Flood, the worst case scenario planners had imagined. But reality moved faster than the blueprints. Under that pressure, water scoured a deep hole beneath seven of the 11 gate bays. The river was digging out the structure's foundation, gouging a pit more than 50 feet deep. In the control room, engineers watched as the southern wing wall collapsed, 67 feet of concrete and steel lost to the current. Each reading came with a new calculation. How long before the next section failed? How much more stress could the gates take? With the structure's capacity dropping fast, the Corps made a decision that had only existed on paper. They opened the Morganza floodway. For the first time, water was diverted into the Atchafalaya Basin, relieving the strain on Old River, but flooding homes and farmland downstream. Meanwhile, construction crews rushed to the site, dumping rock and boulders from barges into the growing scour hole, trying to stabilize the foundation before the river could finish the job. For weeks, the team worked around the clock, adjusting gates, monitoring flows, improvising fixes. When the flood finally receded in June, the low sill structure had survived, 
but its capacity was reduced to just 60% of what it once handled. The lesson was clear. This engineered balance was more fragile than anyone wanted to admit. Sediment never stops arriving in the lower Mississippi. Each spring, the river carries millions of tons of silt, sand, and clay. These deposits slowly lift the channel bed higher above the surrounding delta. This process, known as aggradation, means that the river is always building its own escape ramp, raising itself above the landscape it once carved. At the same time, the ground beneath Louisiana is sinking. The delta subsides as ancient muds compress and groundwater is drawn away. In some places, the land drops by more than a centimeter each year. Sea level, too, is rising, driven by melting ice and warming oceans, adding several millimeters annually to the baseline the river must clear. These forces work together, tightening the margins for control. The levees that once towered over the river now seem less imposing as the land settles and the water rises. Engineers can dredge and reinforce, but the river's upward push and the delta's slow collapse are relentless. Every decade, the old river control complex finds itself working harder to keep the 70% to 30% flow division intact. Geomorphologists point out that this is not a battle humans can win forever. The system is degrading, not in a single dramatic failure, but in the slow compounding pressure of silt, subsidence, and sea. Each major flood tests a balance that grows more precarious with time. The Mississippi's urge to escape is patient, powered by physics, and centuries of accumulated change. For every year the current channel holds, the odds of a future avulsion increase. The stakes are measured not just in infrastructure, but in the fate of cities, economies, and the shape of the American landscape itself. Every year, the old river control structure holds back a force that has rewritten the map for millennia. As climate extremes test its limits, this negotiation grows more fragile. Sooner or later, the river will choose its path, reminding us that engineering buys time, not certainty. What path would you choose?